Today, Elon Musk spoke at the Saudi US Investment Forum. Let's listen in. My friend, please. Please, have a seat. Now, I'm sure we can do a better welcome than that to Elon Musk in Saudi Arabia. There you Thank go. You. That's, that's the spirit. Thank you. Elon, my dear friend, we're honored to have President Trump. We're honored under the sponsorship and guidance of His Royal Highness to celebrate a U.S.-Saudi and a Saudi-U.S. relationship that is 92 years old about how we move from an oil-based economy to an innovation-based economy powered by wonderful technologies that definitely you're one of the pioneers in this industry. We just showed to His Royal Highness some of your Optimus robots yeah. and to President Trump. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Tell me about them. Uh, yes, uh, so we just uh, showed uh, several of our Tesla Optimus robots to His Highness and President Trump, and I think they were very impressed. Um, in fact, one of our robots did the Trump dance, which I thought was pretty cool. The YMCA, yeah? Yeah, to YMCA. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, our robots can dance, they can walk around, they can interact. Um, I think we're, we're headed to uh, a radically different world. I think a, a, I think a, a good world, an interesting world. Um, my prediction, actually, for humanoid robots is that ultimately there will be um, tens of billions. Um, I, I think everyone will want to have their personal robot. You can think of it like uh, as though you had your own personal C-3PO or R2-D2, or, but even better. Then who wouldn't want to have their own personal C-3PO or R2-D2? That would be pretty great. Um, and uh, I, I also think it, it unlocks an immense amount of economic potential because when you, you think of like what is the output of an economy, it is productivity per capita times population or capita. The, uh, once you have humanoid robots, the actual economic output potential is tremendous. Uh, it's, it's really unlimited. Um, potentially, we could have an economy 10 times the size of the current global economy where uh, no one wants for anything. Um, you know, sometimes in AI, they talk about universal basic income. I think it's actually going to be universal high income um, where anyone can have any goods or services that they want. Um, you know, a, a, a science fiction book recommendation that I have, which I think is probably the best envisioning of an AI future, is uh, the, the, the culture books by Ian Banks. Uh, very highly recommended um, for a uh, non-dystopian view of the future. Um, now, there, there obviously are some risks, you know, um, which illustrate perhaps the if we don't do this right, you know, you could have like a James Cameron sort of movie, um, you know, Terminator. Um, we don't want that one. Um, but, uh, but having sort of a Star Trek future would be great, where we're out there exploring the stars, discovering the nature of the universe, um, and, um, and a level of prosperity and hopefully happiness that we uh, can't quite imagine yet. So I'm, I'm very excited about the future. And uh, very glad to be here. Thank you for having me. It's our absolute pleasure. Yeah. Tesla investors or potential Tesla investors may want to pay particularly close attention. A future with tens of billions of humanoid robots may sound like science fiction, but that's also true of today's world if you were to describe it 100 years ago, even 50 years ago. And remember, rate of progress is accelerating. Musk's reasoning here is deceptively simple. I think most people... Obviously, there'll be a couple of weird exceptions, just like people who today carry around a dumb phone just to show how anti-technology they are or unique and special. Most reasonable people, of course, would love to have their own C-3PO or R2-D2. So a pretty simple starting point for a number of humanoid robots. Just assume a one-to-one -one ratio. Every one human has one robot. That's a baseline starting point. This seems to me inevitable over time. Imagine your own Optimus, who's happy to take out the trash, do a little bit of housework, clean up after cooking, whatever. Do some gardening, landscaping, maintenance around the home, cleaning, cooking. Also possibly engage in some banter, change a diaper, run an errand. Then of course there's going to be commercial robots as well. Who knows how many additional humanoid robots will be useful in commercial applications. That's got to be at least another one-to-one -one ratio bot to human, another 10 plus billion, surely at least as a minimum. Maybe a few. 
So we could easily be talking about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 billion humanoid robots as a reasonable, viable baseline number over the longer term. Tell me how I'm wrong. And I suspect that Tesla intends on producing a pretty significant portion of these. Musk also alluded to a global economy increasing roughly an order of magnitude, roughly 10 times, ushering in an era of hyperabundance. And I strongly suspect this wasn't his estimate for the upper limit, but in fact, the point at which everyone can essentially have anything they want for near zero cost, which also eventually is going to be inevitable. As the world transitions to sustainable energy generation and stores that energy, we're going to have an overabundance of energy. What are we going to do with that? Well, spoiler alert, I can power a lot of humanoid robots. And energy is a meaningful cost in the production of goods and services. But the biggest cost, almost always, is labor. But if humanoid robots can contribute to labor, the cost of just about everything, goods, services, products, will fall to nearly zero. This will be such a massive shift. It's really hard to wrap your head around, but it seems like an inevitable future. Assuming we don't have a Terminator scenario on the way there, an era of hyperabundance. That's where humanity is headed. So play along at home and let's imagine that the global economy does actually increase roughly 10 times, predominantly on the back of increasingly useful and increasingly capable humanoid robots. 10, 20, 30 plus billion of the things. If that does happen, then I guess a company manufacturing a reasonable percent of those humanoid robots that have in essence directly scaled the global economy by an entire order of magnitude itself as in the company see its value increase by a truly astronomical amount here's one way to think about it and i'm not making a prediction but just play along at home as i said imagine if the entire global economy did increase by 10 times and a single company hypothetically of course were responsible for just 10 percent of that ready that would mean that this company that contributed just 10 percent to the global economy increasing by an order of magnitude global gdp in other words was responsible for an increase in gdp equivalent to the entire global economy today by the way if you're playing along at home today really roughly global gdp a little over 100 trillion dollars so it is worth considering the possibilities here. If Tesla is successful with the humanoid robot, Optimus, and if Tesla's Optimus humanoid robot does meaningfully contribute to the scaling of the global economy, it's probably worth considering the implications from a Tesla investor's point of view. That said, if I'm being reasonable and fair, I think over a long enough time frame, the very concept of money is going to become utterly meaningless, but I'm going to continue to act as if it's not. Perfect segue to the Star Trek universe. I'm a total Star Trek nerd, in particular Next Generation goated series. And if you're not a Star Trek nerd, there is no money in the Star Trek future because there's an abundance of goods, services. Nobody needs to worry about anything. No one needs to pay for anything. Everything is essentially free. At that point, I mean, seriously, there's a really interesting episode of Star Trek Next Generation where a guy who's been frozen cryogenically from roughly the same era as we are in today is discovered and wakes up in the future. The first thing he wants to do is check on his investments because they're going to waste so much money because he's been frozen for hundreds of years, only to discover very painfully that money has lost all meaning and his investments essentially are worthless. However, I'm still not going to proceed under the assumption that that will play out. But I do think that's where we're going ultimately. Hyperabundance, money loses all meaning. Although how long this takes to happen, who knows? And His Royal Highness was talking to you about his vision and his dream to yeah. increase productivity for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and power up the region and the whole yeah. world with robotics, but also on robo-taxis. So how are we doing on robo-taxis? Uh, yeah, so really you can think of a car or future cars as being robots on four wheels. And, um, you know, I think uh, it would be very exciting to have autonomous vehicles here in the kingdom. Indeed. If, if you're amenable. You heard it here from Elon. <laughs> He's bringing his robo-taxi to the kingdom. Yeah. Imagine my shock. In all seriousness, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Saudi robo-taxis from Tesla happening sooner than many people would expect. The entire region was seeing a huge culture of innovation, of change, progress, and prosperity. A lot of wealth as well. So just planting that flag now, definitely a market to keep your eyes on in the future for Tesla robo-taxi rollout. Um, he has another announcement that he's yeah, going to so share ex there. Exactly. So, and I'd, I'd also like to... to uh, Thank the Kingdom for approving Starlink for maritime and aviation use. Thank you. Maritime and aviation. There you so, go. There you go. Um, so, uh, yeah. 
Uh, so so you're going to bring us robots to help us increase our productivity, yeah. robo-taxis to make sure that our cars and assets turn, to, turn into a cash-generating unit, yeah. and Starlink, Starlink to reform our aviation and maritime. Yeah. Talk about XAI. Uh, absolutely. And, but I should want to mention also uh, something that may be worth considering is tunnels. Tunnels. Uh, the Boring I have, I, Company. <laughs> I have this company called The Boring Company, uh, which sounds kind of boring, but it's, uh, it's, it literally bores tunnels. Um, and actually, uh, tunnels, in, in order to solve traffic, uh, you, you really need to go 3D uh, with roads. And by uh, using tunnels, you can essentially create, create like, like a wormhole, like a, like a warp tunnel from one part of a city to another and alleviate traffic. And we're, we've actually already done this proof of concept in Vegas. So there are w working tunnels in, Ve in Las Vegas that you can use where um, that'll just, it, it feels like teleporting from one part of Vegas to another. So uh, I always say that, you know, my joke is like tunnels are underappreciated. You know, <laughs> um, you know it's a bit of a, you know, not, not always a hit, but. Um, uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and then XAI uh, is, uh, just trying to solve uh, general purpose artificial intelligence. The goal with XAI is to have a maximally truth-seeking AI. Um, and it's, it's important to be maximally truth-seeking AI in order to understand the universe. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal of XAI is understand the universe, um, to understand uh, you know, you know, what, what is out there. Um, where is the universe going? Where did it come from? What questions, in fact, I think maybe the biggest thing is, what questions do we not know to ask? Like, I, once you know the question, the answer is usually the easy part. Um, so the goal of XAI is to help understand the universe, and um, yeah, that's, that's the goal. And, and you know, help people answer any questions along the way, of course, but um, I mean, that's, that's my philosophy. My philosophy is a, one of curiosity just trying to understand the nature of reality. So I know you had a long day, but we also have the Honorable President and His Royal Highness Musaidi hitting the stage soon. Yes. So this is a historic day, a partnership about how we could join hands together as we have joined hands in the past 92 years on building a factor-based economy to help the world empower up 20% of the energy mix, which is very critical today mm -hmm. to the AI intelligence age, the digital age and how we have reformed, and with the intelligent age, and we could not be more appreciative of having a lifetime partner and a friend like you, Elon, to the kingdom. Thank you. Joining hands on XAI, Starlink, and robotics and Tesla. Thank you so much on behalf of the whole right. Thank kingdom. You. It's nice to see Elon Musk being treated so respectfully. The talk wrapping there up with some discussion around energy. What are the odds that we might hear a little bit more about Tesla energy products and the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? in the coming quarters. Bit of food for thought. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.